Heading into week two, the Las Vegas Raiders and Arizona Cardinals were both looking to get into the win column. And one of those teams did, and the other one being one of my favorite teams in the NFL, well, they didn't. It was just, I'm probably going to look like Albert Einstein when I'm all done with here because just, it were, anyway. Uh, so yeah, it wasn't a pretty game for the Raiders uh, as they let the Arizona Cardinals come back and completely win that one, which is a little nuts. I'll, I'll look like I'm at least civilized here, but... It's, it wouldn't be so frustrating if if the Raiders didn't have it right right there, right in their fingertips. But, you know, at the end of the day, the Arizona Cardinals did a great job of, of battling back and finding a way to win that game. Um, uh, but as per usual, we've got standouts and fizzouts for the game. Uh, you know, everybody's got their own version of winners and losers, risers, fallers. Ours is standouts and fizzouts because pop or soda, whatever you want to call it. We love it. Uh, we think it should replace blur. We think it should replace all water and all that. But another thing that should be replaced uh, quite a bit after this game for the Raiders in my mind. But anyway, um, let's get, let's jump right into it. So <sighs> Kyler Murray and company here, yes, wasn't pretty um, you know, uh, for uh, them to start things out with. But they did a lot of good things. Now we'll jump in here um, you know, with the uh, standouts for the Cardinals at first. First of all, Byron Murphy. Like you cannot tell me that this guy is not going to be a standout guy number one because of that scoop and score at the end there. We'll get into the Raiders uh, and the play calling there because I don't think you should have went right back to a guy like Hunter Renfro in that situation. Uh, uh, you know, obviously Byron Murphy able to uh, you know uh, scoop up the ball there and and, and score that walk off touchdown. Absolutely fantastic. He was a guy uh, that you were really excited to see him get that uh, as well. So, uh, but as far as uh, standouts, other standouts for the Cardinals, JJ Watt. Basically, that first sack against Jermaine, Jermaine Illuminar, who we'll talk about again in a second. You know, J.J. Watt going out there, leading the way for that Cardinals defensive line. You love to see it. Uh, Kyler Murray, uh, uh, definitely another guy that, I, I, at this point, Kyler Murray, it's just, it's unfair what he can do uh, with the balls, uh, when the ball's in his hands. He's just so slick. We saw multiple times, uh, multiple Raiders players trying to get their mitts on him, and they just, they couldn't do it. So, uh, you know, Kyler Murray, one of those guys that uh, did pretty well on the night, uh, you know, went 31 of 49 for 270. Seven yards, a touchdown, and an interception. You know, uh, he really kept a lot of plays alive. Only ran the ball five times for 28 yards and a touchdown. Also had those uh, two point that two point conversion as well, which again we'll get into in a second on the Raiders side. But just Kyler Murray, he's just a cheat code at this point. Uh, he's he's tough to bring down. He's a guy that he he does really uh, start your offense when you need him to. Uh, Greg Dortch, definitely another standout. You know, uh, in my mind, Greg Dortch, he should be in the mix. Uh, you know, four catches, 55 yards, and a touchdown. Made a lot of big plays there, uh, including that one late in the third quarter. Um, that, uh, you know, Divine Diablo missed on, but we'll talk about him and also in a second, but um, I'm going to stop teasing those, but yeah, Greg Dortch uh, had that play, uh, that long play that really ignited uh, the Cardinals and really got them that touchdown that got them rolling. Also, second half play calling for the Cardinals. You know, they, they kept Kyler Murray, you know, uh, loose. Uh, they, they spread the ball around, uh, whether it was to Zach Ertz, um, you know, like we talked about Greg Dortch earlier as well. Also, Marquise Brown had a couple of nice grabs there, uh, but uh, uh, but he has to hold that one uh, late in overtime. Like he's, you've got to catch that one that's just that that's how it has to be um also daryl williams had that long touchdown run um and uh also or excuse me had that long run and that touchdown uh, that really helped out the cardinals and really put them in a good spot jan brown by the way got trucked on that that's rough that's absolutely rough so um cardinals fizz outs i mean nick vigil he's been a, a guy in coverage that we've seen that struggled um you know uh, i think overall when you look at those guys eh, when you're playing against this many fast guys in the nfl it's tough to be able to make those plays but um you know like we talked about it zach ertz who got a couple of nice passes there eight catches 75 yards for him um he did a lot of good things uh there as well jalen thompson led the way with 10 tackles for the cardinals david collins you know a guy that kind of was teetering in that position as well i would have liked to see him in a couple of different positions specifically on that amir abdullah uh screen um that i mean basically the entire raiders offensive line also uh, the, i just couldn't believe that the entire cardinals offensive line on that play was basically in the backfield and didn't, didn't stop to realize huh this was way too easy maybe i'm not an all-star maybe i need to get back and make a play it is what it is but you know um you know you can sit there and nitpick but at the end of the day the cardinals were able to make some plays uh and i th i felt like they did a very good job to be able to go out there uh and cap it off uh cap it off excuse me also uh, devon Kennard also lost the edge on that long uh jacobs uh run there early in the game but you know what they were able to recover so not going to beat up too much on the cardinals hey they were able to go out and get a win there so um derrick carr 
They're much better. Much, much, much better. Uh, you know, I, I think when you come off a three interception game, there's a lot of people with the questions, the comments, concerns, whatever it is. But at the end of the day, I mean, Derek Carr went 25 of 39 for 252 and two, like that, and no interceptions. That's the exact game you love to see from him. Josh Jacobs, you know, didn't uh, had himself a pretty good game. 19 carries, 69 yards. Also uh, had himself a couple of nice catches as well. Uh, but I would still like to see that Raiders offensive line create some more room. Um, uh, and I really feel like that that's going to be a big focus moving forward. Another standout for me uh, for the Raiders, you know, we talked about. By the way, let, let's back up. The first fizz out of the game was the NFL camera work. Just like uh, the NFL crew camera work. Like there was like a, at least three plays where I saw the camera was behind the play or a button in front of it. It's just, it wasn't great. But anyway, I think I hope they figured it out and uh, we can all move on. But anyway, so, um, you know, the Raiders standouts like we talked about was that screen game, that Amir Abdullah catch as well as that Josh Jacobs catch uh, there in the first half. Uh, Mac Hollins, he emerged as a number three wide receiver. I don't care what anybody says. He definitely found himself uh, uh, in that conversation. Five carries or five catches, excuse me, 66 yards for the Raiders. Did a lot of good things for him. Also, um, Foster Moreau, had a couple of nice catches. Also had that fumble recovery late. Uh, I mean, which was inevitable a couple of plays later when uh, Darren Waller, excuse me, um, Hunter Renfro would miss that uh, and, and would, would put it on the ground, which is tough. Also another standout, Amik Robertson uh, had that pick uh, in the first half as well as had that tackle on third and long uh, to start things off there, like really set the tone. He's definitely a bright spot in this uh, Raiders uh, defense uh, in that secondary, to be perfectly honest with you. We talked about Amir Abdullah, definitely another standout. Had that nice screen catch. You know, I, I think he's going to be a guy that continues to have a role in that particular area for the Raiders. He's going to be a guy that um, just takes those screens, does a lot of different things because he's very fun to watch. Um, and he's definitely, you know, 23 yards. That's, you know, that was definitely a, a much needed for the Raiders. Um, you know, and we talked about Hunter Renfro. It's just definitely a, a fizz out in my mind. And we'll get all to the rest of the other fizz outs here. But um, Darren Waller, I mean, it's Darren Waller. Had a couple of nice catches, also had that touchdown. You know, he's really showing me that he's worth that extension, and I think he's still one of the best tight ends in football. Dylan Parham, another standout for the Raiders. I mean, just uh, when you watch the Raiders' offensive line, there were times when they were just, uh, there was a lot of pressure, but not a lot of it was from the middle. Dylan Parham did a great job standing in for Andre James today. Uh, uh, let's see. Fizz out, second half offense. I got to be real with you. If you only put up three points in the second half after you basically you shut out the Cardinals, your defense was playing out of its mind. You only put up three points in the second half, including overtime. Including overtime because of a play call in which you decided to go back to Hunter Renfro. It just... My hair is, I'm going to pull all my hair out because I, I get it. You know, he was a guy that they were, the, the Cardinals were bringing pressure. He was a guy that was the hot route. They threw it to him right away. But it's just like you had Devonte Adams. You had Darren Waller. You had Mac Collins. You had all three of those guys that were, that lit, had at least eight yards of separation. Throw it to him early. Let him see what they can do. Uh, and, and, you know, you're, you're still at second and 10. So you got one more play to live from. And it's just, uh you, you just don't go back to hunt for Ren, Hunter Renfro right after that fumble. You know, you, you can't tell me that that doesn't have a little bit of a um, a little bit of a, a, a impact on his psyche after that. Also, Jermaine Illuminar, basically the first play from scrimmage for the Raiders are one of them. He allowed that J.J. Watt sack, also allowed multiple pressures um, uh, on the Raiders. It's time for Mayor Thayer Munford. I'm sorry. It's just time. Also, uh, Max Crosby, man, you're a leader on this defense, and you let Kyler Murray do that? Yes, I know you had a sack. Fantastic. But your batting average is like one of five. It's like, you know, you have to be able to step up as a leader for that defense. Multiple, I would say at least four tackles or four potential sacks that he missed, including late in the game there to help seal, uh, help the Raiders seal it, and he missed it, and ultimately Kyler Murray made them pay for it. Uh, Hunter Renfro, we talked about the two fumbles. You know, I think it's one of those things where the first one, okay, you know, maybe let's give him a play to be able to calm down a player or two, excuse me, but basically right after you go right back to him, listen, I don't care. Um, you you got to give him a little bit. I think you had uh, three other wide receivers that were wide open to your right, and I know it's tough when they're bringing extra guys. But Divine Diablo missed tackles. Uh, had that missed that tackle on Greg Dortch, where he broke one for a long gain there. Um, and then you know it just it is what it is. Now Amik Robertson, I believe, was the one that actually la allowed that touchdown uh, later in that drive to Dortch. But it is what it is. Jonathan Abram, another fizz out. I just. Jonathan Abram to me is the perfect outside linebacker. Uh, you know if he can you know play that position, but it's just. It's just rough. I see him out of position multiple times. I, I said it from the very first time that I, you know, I, uh, you know, I really started watching him and covering him for the Raiders. He's just, he's a good player, but uh, coverage, he continues to struggle. He really does. Um, also, fizz out. 
coaching late to game decisions. Again, you go back to Hunter Renfro. Um, you also, uh, the Raiders, you know, their, their offense got stagnant. You had a couple of options there to be able to ignite that. The, the run game wasn't doing anything for you. Just uh, a lot of different things there, you know, like we touched on uh, for the Raiders coaching decisions. You, As the coach, it's your job to motivate guys, your job to bring in guys to do different things, and they didn't do it. And that's ultimately what I believe led to their demise. Um, you know, we also talked about it. Devontae Adams. You are Devontae Adams, the guy that they traded for in the offseason. You had two catches for 12 yards and a touchdown. That ain't it. You are also the leader of this offense. You are expected to have, you know, and I, I believe you had six or seven targets, if, I do, if I'm not mistaken. And you only haul in two of those. I know with one for that uh, 11 yards right before the half and the touchdown. Listen, you were basically MIA um, in the second half. You've got to be able to step up as that guy. You know, I know Nate Hobbs had a good game uh, for the Raiders, but it just... Uh, it was rough. Also, the Raiders uh, fit another fizz out. The Raiders' defensive line, it just it wasn't pretty in any uh, in any facet. It just wasn't pretty. You only get one sack on Kyler Murray, and uh, you know you, you want Divine Diablo to be your quarterback spy. I mean, he had 15 tackles, but I mean, it just it wasn't good. It really was not good. Uh, Nate Hobbs, really uh, definitely a standout. I think he continues to be one of those guys that he doesn't let up a lot of plays. He also knocked down that pass um, late in the game uh, to uh, keep the, uh, the, the, the Arizona Cardinals from taking the lead there, but it just... <sighs> It is what it is, or at least they're getting back into it, not taking the lead. But Jayon Brown got trucked by Daryl Williams uh, for that touchdown, that one-yard touchdown. Also had 12 tackles. Divine Diablo, 15. Again, I, I would just like to see him in better positions. Um, Amik Robertson uh, uh, also had that pick. So like we touched on, the rest of these guys, it's just it's just rough. It's one of those games where you know you you know one of these teams is going to start at 0-2, but you don't know if it, you don't know or think it's going to be the Raiders. But... It is what it is. Week three, again, 24 hours to soap and, and moan and, and just be upset and then after that you just you just let it go but uh shout out to the arizona cardinals they made a lot of great plays today uh the kyler murray and company they just they are they are uh, uh, still a very good team even without a guy like deandre hopkins so uh, but that's it that's our latest edition of standouts and fizz outs make sure you guys like and subscribe down below leave a like and a comment it helps people find the show we greatly appreciate all the support that we've gotten and continue to get you guys are all truly awesome we love every single one of you down in the description below you'll find all of our social media platforms so give us a like and a follow there also remember to give us a listen and sub on iTunes. Uh, but also at the end of the day, just let us know what you guys, um, you know, what you guys drink. I mean, that's what we said: standouts and fizzouts. Because pop is it Pepsi, Mountain Dew, uh, uh, what, what is it, Doctor Rush or whatever it is, uh, the the, the uh, Walmart off-brand great value stuff. Whatever it is you drink, let us know. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, let us know what you guys think about the standouts and fizzouts from the Las Vegas Raiders versus Arizona Cardinals matchup.